I feel that uh, Europe uh, in the past um, year and a half, uh, at least, and I'd say a few years before that, uh, has faced a challenge which is not so much a policy one. Although we have been debating policies, uh, should we have euro bonds or shouldn't we? Should we have a financial tra tax or not? Should the private sector participate or not participate in aid programs, etc.? But it's more a crossroads and a uh, crisis of values. Uh, two values in particular, there are more, uh, in my view have been challenged uh, in the past few years. Uh, one of them, values by the way upon which the European Union was based and is based. One of them is the value of responsibility, responsibility of each individual member state to its obligations towards its uh, partners in the EU. Uh, and the other value is the value of solidarity, the solidarity of all EU countries towards each other. Uh, now, Greece, my country, without a doubt, violated uh, in the past few years the value of responsibility. Uh, back in 2009, when uh, my government came into power, um, Greece had the most explosive combination of debt and deficit in the EU. And in addition to that, it had another gap, a credibility gap, a sense uh, that had been given uh, that uh, we were not uh, reporting statistics correctly, uh, that we're trying to avoid responsibility. In the past year and a half, we have emerged in an unprecedented, as I mentioned, um, policy shift and change and effort and sacrifice to return to the value of responsibility towards ourselves, first of all, and towards our par partners secondarily. Let me give you a few facts that are not particularly well known, but I think they're quite important because in so many ways, and I'll talk about this more when I talk about the value of solidarity, um, in so many ways, um, the debate in the past year and a half has been based not so much on facts, but on feelings, and many times passionate feelings and negative feelings. In 2010, in only one year, we reduced the deficit in Greece by 5%, by from about 15 point something to 10 point something. No other European country ever in the history of the EU has ever reduced a deficit so dramatically in only one year. We increased revenues as a percentage of the GDP of the country, although we had a recession in Greece and in the rest of Europe by more than any other Eurozone country in 2010 because we increased taxes very dramatically. We collected them. We reduced expenditures more than any other country in the Eurozone, again as a percentage of GDP, because we cut salaries, we cut pensions. We took extremely difficult decisions in 2010. In 2010, 83,000 public civil service employees, which is 10% of the whole Greek civil service, left without being replaced. 20% was the cut that we achieved. We didn't promise, we didn't think it would be nice to do. We achieved in the expenses of publicly owned companies in 2010. And if these are remarkable in themselves, I would submit to you, and extremely painful and difficult in a democracy. Consolidation measures, we also at the same time begin, begin the very difficult process of structurally reforming a country that had derailed itself budgetarily in the past five or six years, but that had also structural problems for the past decades. We rehauled the pension system. And anyone who has tried to recall a pension system knows how, usually how many years it takes and how many negotiations and how, many, how difficult it is. In only one year, increasing uh, retirement uh, ages, which were, by the way, another fact, uh, not a Greek fact, an OECD fact, a Eurostat fact, uh, 61.5 years of age, which is higher than the EU average already. We increased them. Uh, and we took away any incentive for early retirement. And uh, as I said, pensions were also reduced. We changed in only one year in 2010 the Greek municipality system 
from about 1,300 municipalities in Greece, we cut them to 300. And just imagine, not just the cost cutting and the efficiency benefits of this, which was the goal, but also the difficulty in having so many people out of a job, and out of a political job for that matter. We imposed unprecedented transparency measures for the Greek statistical agency, which now has Eurostat members on board, and which never reports to the Greek government before it ever reports to Eurostat. And every decision for spending anything in any Greek ministry or other organization, from the cost of buying a plastic glass to the cost of procuring some major project, has to be immediately placed and is immediately placed in the internet for anyone to be able to see and judge that expenditure. All this was done in one year. And we know that we have a tremendous amount of work ahead of us. We know that this extremely painful change is not over. We know that there's going to be a number of years of transition and change and pain in the people. And believe me, the Greek people are suffering. Now, nevertheless, a few months ago, we were back into a big discussion in Europe about a second support package for Greece. And I think an interesting question is why? And this also ties in a little bit with the solidarity, but a little bit with what I will mention afterwards, the measures that I believe we need to take as Europe now uh, to, uh, to guarantee that we're out of this crisis together. The reasons may be many, but I would submit there are a few that, that stand out to me. The first one is that the international environment and the European environment changed dramatically since Greece received the first loans. I emphasize the word loans, by the way. Greece never received handouts, never asked for handouts. These are loans at very high interest rates, uh, and these are loans that we have repaid back already, and we'll repay back to the last euro to anyone who has lent us that money, whether it is directly or indirectly through the IMF. But since we received these loans and we emerged into applying all these tough measures, this first, if you like, uh, consolidation package that we agreed with, with our partners of the EU and the IMF and the European Central Bank, Portugal and Ireland got into the support mechanisms as well. This wasn't just an indication that, in fact, the problem was never simply Greek, but it was much larger than Greek but also a change in the environment that made the markets much less willing, as opposed to more willing, to open up to Greece, although Greece was taking all these measures. They felt that Europe was becoming more unstable as opposed to more stable, and this has a ne had a negative effect on us as well. Secondly, there was a daily, a constant, a relentless, Uh, philosophy, theory, analyses in the international press that no matter what Greece did, it would default. You will remember these analyses. I'm sure they took place in the Swedish press as well. They certainly took place in international financial press and elsewhere. Why? Because people were saying, well, look, your debt to GDP ratio, even though you're taking these measures, is going up. It's not going down. Therefore, these measures are failing. Therefore, you cannot repay your loans. Therefore, our spreads will start going up again, not down. Now, the remarkable thing about this, and one of the lessons that ought to be learned, is that these evaluations were being made by the same people who were demanding for Greece to take very strict austerity measures in order to be able, in theory, to get out of the crisis. They were saying, you have a huge debt and deficit. You have to fiscally consolidate. You haven't done it yet. Your spreads will go up. And then when we started doing that, the same people came out and said, well, you know what now? Your economy is contracting, as if that were a big surprise, given all the measures we had to take. And because it's contracting, your debt to GDP ratio is going up, and now you really don't have any growth, and therefore, we don't believe we can repair your loans, and therefore, we will predict again that you will default. That kind of a catch-22 
analysis, that kind of a potential self-fulfilling prophecy analysis is something that we had to deal with daily. And guess what? We didn't default. Because we didn't waver. As difficult politically and economically as these measures are, they are necessary for Greece and we know it. And in fact, they are necessary not because some lender of ours is telling us that they are, but because we ourselves know that an economy that is not based on meritocracy, an economy that in, does not invest in the competitive advantages of the country in order to grow, is an economy that is not viable, whether or not you have big debt and deficits today or, uh, or tomorrow. At some point you will have them. A third reason why we found ourselves in this situation is that of course, when an economy contracts, that means that it is extremely difficult when companies close and people lose their jobs to collect the taxes and the money that you need to collect in order to be able to reduce your debt and your deficit. And in fact, that contraction was bigger than what not we, but our partners, our lenders predicted.